Don't clap, I haven't said anything yet. I don't know whether you'll agree with it or not. Uh, it is great to be here with you guys. I'm familiar with the Institute for a long time. I, in fact, long before I even knew it was in Fort Worth and, uh, and met Steve, and this has been a wonderful relationship already that we have had, and, uh, and the ties are getting closer and closer. You know, it frustrates a lot of us that uh, general semantics does not have more presence in American universities. And that's, I think, because the, there's an upside and a downside here. Part of it is because that, that general semantics is such an interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary field, which is great because it, it, it brings so many different perspectives to the table and just go down the rows here and you can see that today. In terms of university politics, though, it's kind of a downside because no one has taken ownership of general semantics. And uh, when, you, when you say, I'm studying general semantics, where are you studying that and in what context? <laughs> and so, uh, unfortunately, there, there hasn't been anyone to sort of uh, run with the flag of general semantics and talk around the academic table about the, the value of, of this perspective. And in the Schieffer School, we don't want to be the home of general semantics at TCU, but we want to be a home. And that's because we believe that general semantics brings a lot to the table for us as uh, journalists and advertising PR practitioners and for the students that we deal with. Journalism is, in fact, in the relationship that we have with general semantics, we need general semantics a lot more than general semantics needs us because journalism basically is is a, a discipline that's essentially concerned with the passing along, getting and passing along information, uh, uh, stories and information to meet a basic human need that we all have to find out what's going on in the world. Uh, if you went to Walmart today and brought a loaf of bread, I don't really care. But if you went to Walmart today and bought a loaf of bread and you, uh, you, you saved a child from being abducted while you were in the store, I care about that. Or even if you didn't and that child was still under. I, I care about that. And so our business in journalism and, and my background, some of you're here, uh, you that are here today, has been in the act of, of getting and passing along that information. We pass it along through a medium. And the media studies are very important for us in journalism. The, the medium is just the conduit by which we pass along the information. But it's really important to understand what we mean by that. Uh, it can be print, it can be broadcast, it can be radio, it can be internet, it can be a visual medium like pictures. And for so long we have believed that that medium was value neutral. And now we know that that is not true. It is not value neutral. A medium like, say, a, a, a spirit medium says, okay, I am in the contact with the next world out there, and I am in contact with you, and the next world can't talk to you, and you can't talk to them, but I am a medium. I'm between. I can deal with them. I can deal with, with you. Uh, today there's a trial in downtown Fort Worth that several of our athletes at TCU, unfortunately, were, uh, have been charged with, uh, uh, with raping uh, young lady in the dorm, and uh, there's a lot of interest in that at, uh, at the university, of course. And I've not been to that trial. I know a great deal about it, though. I know a great deal about what's going on down there, and haven't been, haven't been anywhere near the courthouse where all this is going on. And that's because some journalist has been there in my place, and through various media has been passing that along to me. But we know that the media themselves are really important because as McLuhan said the medium is the message that every medium has a content the content is the stories the content is the pictures but McLuhan said the medium that the medium itself has a great influence on that the ultimate message is from the medium in terms of influencing the way we think and how we react etc in fact McLuhan said that that the content of a medium is like a juicy steak carried by a burglar to distract the watchdog of the mind. 
Isn't that great? I love that. I just love to quote that. The content of the medium is like a juicy steak carried by a burglar to distract the watchdog of the mind. And that's exactly what happens. So, so frequently we get ca so caught up in the content we forget about the nature of the medium. So we've got a medium like television. And that medium does certain things well and certain things poorly. And we think, well, I, I can, I can, something is happening downtown. I can learn about it in print or I can read about it on the internet or I can see it on television or I can hear it in, in radio. And they're all the same. I just got it from a different medium. No, they're not the same. Because the medium affects what you see. Television does certain things well, does certain things poorly. If it's got action, if it's got conflict, if there's floods and fires and people hollering at each other and violence and mayhem going on, television does that very well. If television, if it's about uh, economic story, about uh, a budget resolution, or if it's about foreign policy, television does that very poorly. There's no pictures to see. Uh, there's no conflict to draw you in on, on, that, on that medium which relies on, on pictures. Um, on foreign policy. Now, if we start bombing somebody, all of a sudden we got great pictures, and now television becomes a great medium. Well, by the same token, language is that medium also. Language is, the, is one medium that's a part of another medium. And, and to understand, we believe in the Schieffer School, to understand more about how that language works, and to understand how we use language. Basically, journalists get their information in one of three ways. Number one, we watch. We watch stuff happening, and we observe things. And we see from a uh, GS orientation, we see what that means in terms of the, the observation that we can do, because there's things that we understand and a perspective that we have that makes us better observers. And once we have observed, we have to frame that in language and ultimately pass that along. And, and the whole concept of news reporting is just a process of abstract. That's what, that's what news reporters do. You have to, there are certain things that you observe, certain things you don't. Certain things you don't, you don't observe because you don't understand them, because they mean nothing in your frame of reference. So even though they're happening in front of you, you don't observe them. So one way we get information is by just watching stuff. Another way is uh, we, uh, we get it from paper sources, from public records, and, and from books, and and things in our archives and things like that. Another way is by talking to people. We interview people and ask them questions and get information that we ultimately pass along. We deal as journalists with oral and written language. And we believe that general semantics brings a perspective on the medium that is in effect our lifeblood uh, that, uh, that no, nothing else no, no, other, no other field brings us. When, when, when English literature majors are reading through the, uh, through the looking glass, and they hear Humpty Dumpty say, when I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. Now they see a character speaking. Uh, what I want, I want journalists to see that as a principle of language use. If you didn't understand that, how could you ever cover a politician? When I use a word, it means what I want it to mean, neither more nor less. So tell me about your economic. Oh, I'm, I'm against. I'm against taxation. No new taxes. Well, we have we have some revenue enhancement majors, we, uh, majors that we, you know. And I want journalists to understand that. And I was just talking with a with another uh, general semantics prof at the University of Missouri. We we're talking about how important it is for young reporters as they're in a basic class to understand just the kind of things that maybe you guys here just take for granted. But if you live with, with words and reporting words and interviewing people, etc., how important that is. Uh, what do we want to focus on, just briefly? Uh, we, want to, we want young journalists to, to learn how to react to various meanings behind what people say, how they use words. We want to look for differences among similarities and similarities among differences. Uh, the very essence of being a reporter is the, is the old writing saw about show, don't tell. You know, don't, don't just tell people, show it. That comes from observations and knowing how to do that. And the general semantics trained observer will has a different attitude about observation. And I was just listening as Milton was talking today about that 
and not only just in using in using the language, but also that that GS frame of mind as Milton was talking about today, and that's exactly the frame of mind uh, that we want that we want our students to have. We think it makes a great deal of difference for a journalist to understand stereotyping as a as someone in general semantics would understand, would understand, be conscious of the way we abstract, et cetera. So when we talk about general semantics in, in the Schieffer School and we're looking for new ways, we have, we're, we're not there, we have only begun. But uh, when, when we look at general semantics, we look at something that we say that for us in this very practical day-to-day -day information gathering world, uh, this is not only a tool, but also a mindset that we want our students to have. Doug Newsom.
unfortunately, this is more common than you might imagine. Um, and although my other language is Spanish, anytime I have to deliver a paper in Spanish, I write it in English, and then I write what I would consider a Spanish version. But I have people who are recently from the country where I'm going, whether it's you know a South American country, because that's their Spanish is different. In fact, Spanish is different even in the United States between the Chicanos and the Puerto Ricans and you know, all that. But I have someone read it and correct the Spanish, and I'm very careful not to use idiomatic expressions or any kind of um, expressions that we're familiar with. Because I, I became aware of that and when I was doing workshops in, in uh, Hungary, right after they were out from under the communist rule, and my spouse was with me on that trip, uh, along with a Canadian uh, friend of mine and, and Lee Cullum from uh, Channel 13. Much to my horror, my spouse was talking about democracy, was talking about democracy being different and Hungarian democracy was going to be different from the United States democracy. But then when he had a question from the floor, which was translated, and his response to that was, well, you don't throw off the baby with a bath, bath of water. Okay. okay, we were talking to all men, all of them uh, former officials of the Communist Party, all of them, you know, 65 plus, they had probably never held a baby except maybe a christening or, you know, baptism, if there was such during that regime, you know, been a long time. And they certainly had never bathed one. <laughs> so the translator fortunately stopped and looked at me because I was a group leader and I said, don't translate that. 